The world has very many, very many people have accused me of exploiting my children and then those very people have turned around and exploited my children. I'm gonna say one nice thing and that is you took your lashing very well. Everything in their life is open to you. Everything. Police say this is the house a young child escaped from and went to a neighbor's house asking for food and water. As long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know everything about you. You don't get to sneak, you don't get to hide, you don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here and I'm still an alpha male. You may have heard of the family channel Eight Passengers and the mum Ruby Frankie, who's been making headlines since 2020 when viewers started to notice her harsh parenting style. If you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. Grandma will be so mad! So what are you going to do? I made a video on the Eight Passengers family about three years ago, which they copyright claimed and had taken down. I then re-uploaded the video with certain segments taken out, but since then a lot has happened, including Ruby Frankie being arrested and held in custody for child abuse. If you are new here, my name is Uncle Herman, and yes, this is my voice. I make internet deep dive videos and analyze internet news stories like this one. Today I'm going to compile the history of all of the allegations against Eight Passengers and all the times that people raised the red flag before the authorities finally got involved last week. But first, I want to take a quick moment to thank my sponsor for this video, Colon Broom. Colon Broom is a high fiber supplement that you can take to support your gut and your digestive system. They were kind enough to send me some samples to try and I can honestly say that my body has been thanking me. I do genuinely feel a difference when I use these. I've had problems with indigestion and acid reflux for years and have tried so many different products for it. So I can honestly say that this supplement has helped control my symptoms and I've noticed a difference which I don't normally feel with other products. Colon Broom helps reduce bloating, indigestion, constipation, as well as improving your skin health and lowering your bad LDL cholesterol. They can even help to lower your risk of diabetes by slowing down the absorption of sugar. There are so many benefits and it actually does taste nice. It's like having a nice drink that just happens to come with loads of health benefits. You can get a six month supply for 65% off by clicking the link in the description. And then on top of that offer, you can also use my code Herman at checkout to get an extra 10% off. Thank you again to Colon Broom for sponsoring this video and click the link below to check out this amazing offer. So Eight Passengers was a YouTube channel that at its peak had over 2.3 million subscribers tuning in to see Ruby Frankie vlogging her family life with her husband Kevin and their six children living in Utah and following the Mormon church. Like most family channels, the vlogs relied on Ruby pushing her camera into her children's face and putting it online for everyone to see. These kids' highs and lows, traumas and punishments were all completely public. Anyone could watch them growing up. And these children were the product that their mother was exploiting to make money. On the surface, Ruby Frankie is your typical white suburban religious mum. But as the channel grew, people started to notice that she was giving her kids very harsh punishments for small mistakes and that she was holding her kids to impossible standards. Compilation videos started popping up with titles like The Eight Passengers Being Abusive for 13 Minutes Straight. These videos included clips of Ruby admitting taking one of her kids' beds away for seven months as a punishment for a prank that he played on his little brother, telling viewers that her kids having a bedroom is a privilege. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give yes. you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. Do you think it's funny? Because... And then I walk out. If and you he... think it's funny, then you... That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. It... No, it was not funny. There's also an infamous clip of Ruby telling her viewers that she was going to withhold food from a six-year-old child for forgetting to pack their own lunch. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable 
with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with a lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully, hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. Ruby would also talk about banning electronics or cell phones for her kids all summer and videos showed the kids being upset that they are not able to talk to their friends. Multiple times her kids have been heard in her vlog saying that they don't have any friends. And, and, and you may, you may never get the phone back. Probably not. No, I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Because, because they're really they say some pretty people. messed up stuff. I don't even, I don't even know where they live. <laughs> they're pretty far away. So? This could be not only because the older children cannot message or text their friends, but also because their lives are being broadcast online for anyone to see, including their classmates, who would easily be able to find and watch their entire lives unfold on YouTube. It would not surprise me if these kids were being bullied at school because of the ways in which their mother has been exposing their most vulnerable moments online for profit for the majority of their lives. Ruby has also spoken about locking her three and five year old in a room so that she can have a nap and then getting angry when they make a mess in that room and annoyed that they didn't know the correct way to clean it up at age three and five. And I put my my two children, my almost six-year-old, she's probably five, and then um, Chad, my three, almost four-year-old, in the on a couch and I put on a movie. And I said, I am going to go lay down. Do not <laughs> move from your couch. You, you got your blanket, you've gone to the bathroom, um, the, the doors were locked and bolted. And I said, I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to lay your sister down for a nap, uh, the baby, and I'm going to go lay down. And an hour later, I came downstairs and the movie was still going and they were sitting on the couch and they were cuddled in their blankets. I thought, oh, good. They did what they were told. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so relieved. OK, so I went into the kitchen to start preparing some food. And as I walked on the floor, my feet went, they, they stuck, they stuck. I'm like, my foot is stuck to the floor. And as I lifted my foot up off the floor, it went, like you could, you could hear the stickiness. I could hear it with my ears. I thought, oh, my gosh, what is on this floor? This floor was absolutely clean before I went upstairs. I went upstairs for an hour and I came down and now it is covered, covered. There is something that's going on and one of you or both of you know something and you're not telling me. It, it didn't look like there was anything wrong. Well, you as anybody, anybody older than four years old knows that if you have pineapple juice and you take a paper towel and you soak up the pineapple juice, you don't, you're not actually cleaning the pineapple juice. You're just making it look like there's no pineapple juice. And so I, I looked at him and here's where the compassion comes in. And I hope that you can hear it. I said, I, that, that's a good thing that you told me that what you have done and you didn't clean it up. Ruby Frankie is essentially a real life Miss Trunchbull. There are hundreds of instances of Ruby neglecting and controlling her kids. In this video, for example, Ruby talks about how she will not be giving Christmas presents to her younger children because they have been making selfish choices. The two youngest are showing long patterns of selfishness. They have been showing um, through their choices, their unwillingness to repent, their unwillingness to feel sorrow over some pretty egregious choices that they've made. Um, so Kevin and I have decided that we are going to give the gift of truth to them this year for Christmas. We are going to give them the gift of boundaries and we're going to give them the gift of repentance. So, you know, they've had these visceral experiences, uh, you know, and they haven't they haven't affected them. It's because they're so numb. And so the more numb your child is, the greater experience, the, big, the bigger the outcome, they need to wake them up. <laughs> you're, you're not going to push a boulder with just your hands. You need some real leverage. And the biggest leverage that a little child has is probably Santa Claus. People started to pick up on Ruby's behavior towards her kids and their seeming reluctance to be in her vlogs. There are many instances in which the children ask her to stop filming them, but Ruby continues to film and upload it. Ruby began copyright striking videos about her, including my own, and they sent a number of cease and desist letters to big channels to try and stop them making videos about them. They then posted a video telling viewers that they have been advised by mental health professionals to say that this is how they should be treating their kids and essentially say that people online should not be getting involved in their parenting. Face, hardship resilient. and pain to develop resilience and grit and that's what leads to success in life. 
if we make things easy on our kids all the time, they're going to grow up to be snowflakes. Yeah. And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have uh, counseled us to do. In May 2020, a change.org petition was started, urging child protection services to investigate Ruby and Kevin Frankie. The petition got 17,000 signatures, and child protection services did actually briefly investigate the case. They went and interviewed the kids, but the case was closed soon after as they did not find enough evidence. I only wish they'd investigated this further at the time, because then perhaps these kids could have escaped the situation sooner. And the 2020 investigation was not the only time that they were investigated before the arrest in 2023. Ruby stopped uploading vlogs in January of 2022, and the Eight Passengers channel went dormant. Around this time, their neighbours started to voice concerns about the family, and the police were called to their home multiple times. Records show that the police responded to the home more than a dozen times during the last four and a half years. Several of those visits were related to concerns about the children's well-being. However, officers responding wrote that they saw children in the home, but the children would not answer the door. A neighbour told Rolling Stone that in early 2022, it started getting weird. People were concerned because Ruby completely stopped her YouTube stuff and then it kind of turned dark. She taped up paper all over her windows and she would disappear for weeks at a time and there's all these little kids just left alone in this house. A lot of these reports detail Ruby Frankie leaving the kids to see her friend Jodie Hildebrandt. It's also worth noting before we go into Jodie and Ruby's relationship, the neighbours have said that it is common knowledge that Ruby's husband Kevin moved out of the residence last year so the children were being left alone for long periods of time. So who is Jodie Hildebrandt and why was Ruby spending so much time with her? Well, Ruby's time with Jodie is well documented. In 2022, Jody and Ruby went into business together, starting a mum support group called Mums of Truth. Alongside this, Ruby started appearing on Jodie's channel Connections. Connections is Jodie's business venture that she founded in 2007. And then last year, she decided to train Ruby as a life coach, and Ruby got more involved when she told viewers that she was leaving YouTube to do more with Connections. It is speculated that Jodie got Ruby more involved as a way of increasing her own reach, as she knew that Ruby came with a certain amount of followers and subscribers that she would then aim to convert to Connections and Mums of Truth. It is also important to note at this point that Jodie Hildebrandt is no stranger to the Frankie family. She was actually the eldest son's therapist for a while. I had a phone call yesterday with my therapist and she taught me about truth and distortion. Mom probably talks about Jody all the time. But. I've mentioned Jody a few times. She has a podcast called Connections with an X. Anyway. What did, what did you learn? Well, I learned about the three different types of pain and uh, we can feel pain in ways of our own choices other people's choices and just like random events and it's our way to choose to see things in truth so me deciding that my stomach ache was chad's fault was not seeing things in truth right so jody describes herself as an educator a mother an author and a life coach and founded connections as a way of helping treat those lost and stranded in the darkness of distortion which addictions fear sadness and all other self-destructive behaviors derive from Jodie started out as a porn addiction therapist, but came into controversy in 2012 when she broke patient confidentiality by sharing information about a patient with his university, which resulted in him being kicked out. The information that she shared was also allegedly made up. The client said, she spent hardly any time knowing about my life. She didn't want to talk about my personal goals or my progress. She would only threaten me that if I didn't take more sessions and have my wife take more sessions, the alleged addiction would destroy my life. After this incident, Jodie was taken to court and her license was put on probation for 18 months. She eventually got her license back, but her credibility, especially in relation to her newest business ventures with Ruby, was put into question long before now. And some kids won't even do it out of compliance. They'll just get hit and then they'll just look at you like, so, now what are you gonna do? Hit them harder? You know, like, pummel them? In the Connections program, Jodie and Ruby encourage homophobia, transphobia, and general complete control of your children, and essentially promote parental abuse as a godly way of parenting. The priority is truth, which is God. That's your, that's your priority. That comes first. And then everything and everyone else comes underneath principles. Everyone on the world, there's this woke mentality. Someone just said to me just a few minutes ago, like, you talk so much about being awake, but you don't like to say the word woke. <laughs> and I laughed and I'm like, does this person not understand the difference in the meaning of woke and awake? <laughs> it's like completely opposite. But the person who was saying it thought that they meant the same thing. Yeah. Right. Another thing that people are um, being divided around is LGBTQ. And I think there's an I now. Plus. Plus. 
Okay, it's another of these movements that are going on in our world that is divisive. Well, it is. I mean, they're putting meaning on the words, and I don't. It's constantly changing, so it's putting people on edge. Like, did I say that right? Did I miss the letter? Did I miss something? Do I not know? Oh, you don't know what that means. I mean, how many times? I mean, I work with people every day, and not every day, but probably once a week. Somebody says a word like cisgender was the last word I learned. <laughs> I'm like, what in the heck is that? It's just a made-up word that someone placed meaning on. So there's another. In this home, you don't get personal space because this is my space because I'm the parent. If you want your own personal space, you'll need to get your own space. This is mine. And as long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know everything about you. You don't get to sneak, you don't get to hide, you don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Now, if you're in distortion, you're reeling right now. Your children have a right to privacy. And I would say very clearly, no. Everything in their life is open to you. Everything, uh, journals, um, they're, they're, you know, if they, if you've graciously given them a room, that room's yours. It's not theirs. Your drawers. Um, everything is up to investigation whenever you want to go and investigate. When Ruby first started appearing alongside Jody, she claimed that she left eight passengers because it was endangering her kids being exposed to the internet. It is true, but it seems that she's not able to admit that she was exploiting her kids for money and that they did not deserve to have their lives broadcast online. Instead, she was upset that people were getting angry at her for the ways that she was treating her kids and therefore she removed them from the internet altogether. No doubt so that she could control them more and control their perception of her more. As if they are able to log into their YouTube channel and see comments criticizing their mother's treatment of them, that's going to be bad for Ruby, who wants to keep treating them horribly and wants them to think that her parenting is the only good way of parenting. You wonder where I've been on my vlogs? You wonder why I left YouTube? It's to save my kids. No amount of money. I, and I'm telling you, I was making millions and I left it because my kids were being hurt. With entitlement, they were being hurt with people's advice and they didn't have a mother up the front saying I don't care what the world's opinion is this is the truth and this is where I stand and fortunately I had a chance I had them in my home long enough to do it and I'm not gonna lose them they're seeing truth they're accepting truth they're loving truth and so this is my passion is to invite you to stand in truth and put your opinions to the side for a minute because your kids are the target of distortion in the Connections videos, Ruby and Jody call any thoughts that do not fit with their worldview distortions and claim that they can coach you out of these distortions and teach you the truth. If you're thinking that it sounds like a cult, that's because it does. It aligns with a lot of the principles of coercive control that are found in cult-like organizations. We have a leader, Jody, who claims that she knows the truth. She is claiming to be a godlike figure with knowledge that most other people don't have because they are living in a so-called distortion of reality. She claims that her reality is on a higher plane and is the truth. And in order to find the truth, you need to pay her hundreds and thousands of dollars to coach you. Her version of the truth involves isolating you, reinforcing traditional gender roles, denying other people's truth, and through their parenting teachings, Jody encourages complete control of your kids. This parenting advice is not about putting the kids first, it's not about letting kids be themselves, it's about parenting being a position of power and using that to exercise complete control over children. It's almost like these mums have no control over any other aspect of their lives, so they result to controlling their kids and getting mad at them when they don't conform. There are so many incriminating videos from the Connections channel and podcast, and pretty much their entire online presence. I found a very interesting video on the Connections Instagram page of Jody talking about how parents are responsible for protecting their children from abuse. I know that many of us, if not all of us, have been conditioned to um, believe that, you know, if someone is being abusive, then you need to get away from that person who's being abusive. But it's okay to leave the kids in that environment. And I understand that many of the laws in the world support that. A man or a woman can be being abusive and they still will have their children given to them, which is horrible. And I understand why the law does that, because there's so much deception going on that the law, quote unquote, they don't know where the truth is. They don't know who's telling the truth. I find this video incredibly ironic considering that both Jody and Ruby have been abusing their children. It seems like they are working overtime to try and prove themselves as excellent parents to the internet to hide what is going on behind the scenes. Either that or they are truly deluded into thinking that this type of abuse 
aspects in their parenting is truly what they think God wants from them. On the 30th of August 2023, a 911 call was made by a neighbour of Jody Hildebrandt. The call detailed that a 12-year-old boy who was later identified as the son of Ruby Frankie had come to the neighbour's house asking for food and water. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. We know there's been problems at this neighbour's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry and he's thirsty. And he asked us to call the police. What's so he's very afraid. This kid has obviously been... I think he's been... He's been detained. He's been... He's obviously covered in wounds. All right, we need the cops here as soon as possible. The police report states that they found the child malnourished with open wounds and duct tape on his body. They then found Ruby's 10-year-old daughter in a similar condition of malnourishment in the house. Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie were subsequently arrested on six counts of child abuse. Upon their arrest, Ruby Frankie's eldest daughter posted a picture of the scene with the words, finally. She then wrote, today has been a big day. Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this and are so glad that they finally decided to step up. The eldest daughter is now at university and has been able to escape the Frankie household and has since set up a Google document that she encourages people to add to with questionable or concerning evidence so that she can build a case against her mother. The document is already full of evidence from the eight passengers channel and connections proving Ruby Frankie's malicious treatment of her children. To think that her daughter is the one having to compile the evidence against her mother is truly horrific but it also shows how the police and the CPS have had so many opportunities to get involved. From the neighbours calling on them over a dozen times to the viewers campaigning to have them investigated, to the daughter herself telling them that something was wrong. This arrest has been a long time coming and I only wish that they had found evidence sooner. As the trial begins, I only hope that Ruby and Jody do face the punishment that they deserve and that anyone who was following the Connections channel for actual parenting advice realises how horrific and misguided it was and seeks help. This story has been truly horrific, but the worst part of it for me is that most people on YouTube completely saw it coming. I think that we need to be more wary of family channels in general. I've always been against them personally, but I truly don't think that there is a healthy way to use your kids for YouTube money. And any parent that is putting a camera in their kid's face and uploading that to YouTube needs to understand that they are using their child for unpaid labour. And all family channels should be subject to welfare checks, in my opinion, by a child protection service to ensure that the children are safe and understand what it means to have their lives being put online. And the parents need to be aware of the dangers that they are exposing their children to because you can't just keep ignoring it.